We're going to begin. Hello and welcome. I'm Peter Baldaya, Director of Curatorial Affairs for the Huntsville Museum of Art. And I'm here today with my colleague, David Reyes, Curator of Exhibitions and Collections for the Museum. We're pleased to be hosting the museum's fourth virtual artist talk and studio visit in connection with the exhibition About Face, Portraits from the Collection, currently on view at the museum through November 29th, 2020. I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Our guest this afternoon is featured artist, Gayla Irwin of Louisville, Kentucky. Now Gayla is no stranger to the Huntsville Museum of Art. Her work was juried into three versions of our recurring red clay survey exhibitions of regional contemporary art in 1994, in 1998, and in 2012. And her uh, work was also featured in a solo show under the Encounters series at the museum in 2002. And from that show, we acquired a very arresting painting, self-portrait as Saint Poulet. And it was a very memorable piece in the show. And it has become a longtime favorite for museum visitors. We use it as often as we can in our collections exhibitions. And we're very pleased to have the opportunity to feature it again in our current About Face exhibition. So before we begin, I wanna quickly thank the sponsors of the exhibition, the uh, Alabama State Council of the Arts and the Huntsville Museum Art Guild. And again, let me remind all of you who've tuned in today that during the course of the program, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type in any questions as we proceed um, because we're gonna to wanna to try to get to those at the end of the program. Program should last about 45 minutes. We may go a little bit longer. Uh, Gail is a very interesting artist and she has very interesting works to consider. So we'll see. Um, and so now I'll hand the program over to David Reyes who will introduce today's artist, Gayla Irwin. Thank you, Peter. And good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce Gayla Irwin. Inspired by the rich history of traditional portraiture, Gayla Irwin's paintings and pastels are infused with a sense of intimacy, rawness, and vulnerability, transporting the genre into the contemporary realm. Known primarily for her self-portraits in the guise of saints, Irwin has produced uh, a series of compelling portraits of her mother, her sister, and herself that explore familial relationships. Born in Franklin, Indiana, Irwin received her BFA from the Columbus College of Art and Design in 1973, and her MA from the University of Louisville in 1983. She has taught at numerous schools and institutions, including LaGrange College in LaGrange, Georgia, Bellamere College in Louisville, Kentucky, and an artist residency uh, for 10 years at St. Francis High School in Louisville. Gayla has participated in over 50 solo and group exhibitions with regional, national, and, in, and international venues. Irwin's work can be found in numerous private and public collections, including the Speed Museum, the 21C Museum Foundation, the Columbus College of Art and Design, the Huntsville Museum of Art, the Evansville Museum of Arts and Science, among others. She has received numerous and various awards and recognitions, including a Painters and Sculptors Grant from the Joan Mitchell Foundation, an Artist in Residence from the Camargo Foundation Fellowship of Cassis, France, and the BP Portrait Award from the National Portrait Gallery in London, England. In 2009, Gayla won the Commended Award for from the prestigious Atwind uh, Bolshevier National Portrait Competition at the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. We are pleased to have with us today, Gayla Irwin. Thank you, David and Peter. I am honored to be a part of this program. Uh, it's, it almost feels like old um, homecoming week. Uh, you guys have been such a part of my life for so long. So thank you for choosing me to be part of your program. Thank you. So she, we'll begin with the PowerPoint and we'll get that up on the screen in just a moment, here we go. 
There we go. Okay. So we can advance to the first slide, probably, Danny. Oh, Danny's going to do it. Sorry. Danny's going to okay. do it. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, I, I want to start out with this image uh, that I um, be, did in, when I was 10 years old. I took lessons from a portrait painter. My mother was uh, really wonderful about um, helping me as, as a child and a, a growing adult to have lessons to help me um, pursue my goals. So this was a, a skull that was on my father's desk. I was learned, I learned from working from life and I brought it in and this is what you see. But what I'm, what I'm interested in showing here, we can move to the next slide, is that um, I had a, a young woman tell me that her instructor told her that you, there's a couple of things that are sort of like water circling the drain. They are recurring, lifelong um, images or whatever is directing your choice of subject matter. So I'm showing this, this was probably when I was 11. And again, you can see that kind of darkness um, that actually transcend, it becomes part of the way I have painted for my entire career. At this time, um, I had had no particular um, issues with uh, losing a family member. Um, I had a, a regular childhood. Um, I did not lose someone uh, close to me until I was in my early 40s. So it may be that um, my um, Great grandfather was uh, an undertaker, and my grandfather was um, not unlike the character in the Rico in uh, Rico in um, Six Feet Under. He loved to reconstruct um, dead people for mm -hmm. presentation in their coffins, and he was very, very good at restoration. So I never knew any of them, but who knows, it may be a kind of trans transgenerational gene. Yeah. Okay, we can move on to the next one. Thank goodness. Okay, now we're, now we're in my adult phase, very adult phase. And um, again, this is, um, although I had no particular um, religious uh, upbringing, a Methodist, um, I, most of the work that I have learned from have had religious uh, backgrounds due to the fact that they were done in the, uh, 14th or 15th or 16th century, which I have studied exclusively. And this is um, called Bird on a String. And this is a sort of a nod to Goya, who did a little boy holding a bird on the string. And the bird on the string represents Christ. Um, my image um, is one of uh, both, it represents sort of a, a, I don't wanna say transgendered, but it certainly represents um, and, and in between, I, I have my hair in a standard um, a custom of sort of someone of the working class uh, in the 1700s with the hair pulled back, not a wig. And um, the rest of my dress, of course, is very female. So I like that mix of gender. Um, of course, the um, you see the use of the uh, the kind of European uh, setup you would find in the um, in the European works of the, that period. This was to all done from life. Uh, okay, we can move on to the next one. Um, so I got very interested in doing uh, works that were about um, saints. Um, and these were all done from life. I would do a lot of research on uh, different saints and I designed this frame to accommodate a predella, which is the smaller one in the bottom that were used uh, for the lay people in the, in the church so that they could, they were typically not uh, able to read. So they would explain who that saint was. So this imagery, so this is, this is um, St. Lucy and she lost her eyes as a result of um, the torture that was then relegated to, uh, to saints and, and, and justified her sainthood. So um, I borrowed, these are actually from, uh, for a doll. Um, 
Okay, I think we can move on to the next one. Again, these are all done from life. Um, this one is a portrait of St. Apollonia. And uh, I found these false teeth in, uh, on a beach actually in Greece where I was studying with the um, New York uh, School of, oh, I can't think of the name of it. Um, it was, uh, I'll, I'll think of it later, but it was a, a, a school in uh, Samos, Greece. And there were wonderful teachers from um, the New York uh, School of uh, Art. And uh, this is a place where I really was able to learn a lot about trusting in realism. So um, this is uh, one of those examples of a saint. Um, yeah, that was tough because I had to keep my mouth open. Um, mm -hmm. Not an easy thing to do. It wouldn't, it, and the other thing I, wanna, I want to have people understand is that because I'm such a pers um, perfectionist and that I do perseverate, which means I'll do something over and over and over again to get it the way I want it to, um, I really, really need to have a, a sitter who's willing to do that. And not many people um, are willing to do that. And, um, and then the model bills began to rack up very early when I was preparing to do these things. And the other issue is as an empath, you feel for what you're putting that, that artist or the, the model through, you see them struggling, you see the fatigue, you see the the exhaustion and that distracts, that distracts from that painting process. You're feeling that rather than concentrating on what you want to get out of that. So between the model bills and um, feeling the discomfort that, that that what you're putting that person through uh, may sell portraiture a very reasonable choice. Okay, we can go on to the next one. Okay, um, this is self portrait Peter Martyr. Um, and you see a lot of him in, um, in Europe and in Mexico. Uh, I did go to Mexico and I, I loved seeing in those cathedrals and those churches, the very rawness um, uh, that, of their saints versus the ones that we see in this country. Uh, and uh, I was lucky enough to have access to a, uh, a surgeon's uh, models and he had this beautiful German model of a head with the brain exposed. So I, I borrowed that and uh, put my own face on the model. So it was, it was a beautiful piece of, of sculpture as it were. Um, and of course, he, you see him in Europe. He's at all the nativity scenes. Um, here's, here's the Christ child in the mother's arms, new, newly born. And this guy is standing right there next to the, the Holy Family with a, a cleaver in his head. Can't be the most pleasant view, but he's always, and I love that. I thought this is fabulous. I, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, a, it, I'm sorry, but it's humorous. So um, anyway, I, I, he's one of my favorites. Okay, we can go on to the next one. Okay, this is self-portrait as Jesus Christ. And I thought while I'm doing the saints, I might as well go big. And um, this is, uh, I, again, the same um, surgeon offered uh, some of his models, and this was a heart that I was able to find. And that's in a predella. And of course, we know um, Christ was all about heart. And um, the crown of thorns in this case is actually barbed wire. At the time, I had a, a very dear friend who allowed me access to her horses. And there's, if you ever ride on a farm, you'll find barbed wire everywhere, sadly. Um, but it was uh, something I wanted to do. And uh, I used um, glycerin to create tears. Uh, again, this is all done from life. So it, it took, you know, I had to keep pouring the glycerin down my, uh, down my cheeks to, to get that. Um, okay, next one. And this is um, self-portrait as St. Margaret of Portona. And um, St. Margaret, uh, lost her, I think he was a Christian soldier. He died, uh, also a martyr. Um, and she was led to his, his corpse by, uh, by a little dog, her dog. And um, this is uh, Lacey, my beloved, uh, now deceased Chinese crested. 
Um, and she appears in many of my paintings. Now I, now I have um, a Chinese crested that's completely hairless and her name is Fanny and she's wearing a collar right now because she has an eye problem. So anyway, so we see the, the bones and um, often you'll see the, the European painters showing the dog and the woman discovering this, this guy's body. Mm. Okay, next. Um, so my thesis for my application for the Camargo Foundation was based on the fact that I wanted to explore more the churches and cathedrals that did offer so many splendid um, images and visages of the saints. Um, they are really gorgeous and, and done by the very, very best painters, unlike in the United States where we have maybe 19th century painters who are representing the saints and they're tamed down quite a bit. So Saint Paulette uh, is an imaginary saint and she's the port patron saint of um, chickens. And she was uh, actually, do we think an imaginary saint who protected the flocks of chickens from disease um, or from any other evil that could befall them. And of course, in these communities, these farming communities, um, disaster is always around the corner and starvation. So she is, um, she is beatified due to um, her powers to protect chicken flocks. Um, I was at the time uh, locked into my studio. The light there in the Mediterranean is very, very bright. And I had to, um, I'd cover all the windows because the right light was so extraordinarily uh, brilliant. The, um, the, I was telling you, the quail I selected um, from the farmer's markets uh, in France, they have birds um, pretty much intact. And I was able to uh, paw through the ones and um, have the, uh, the vendors let me choose one with really great feet. Um, uh, as you might know, the French are not particularly thrilled with an American accent, but um, they, they humored me anyway. And I, I came home with this. The, the issue became after being frozen many times, again, I'm working from life, um, his head began to flop and my uh, husband partner at the time was called in to um, brace, the, brace his hands in that position. And um, after being frozen and, and thawed two or three times, again, I'm a very slow painter, he had to keep the head of the bird upright by using a pencil. So he was, he was getting pretty tired of this little chore. So um, I finished it fast, but not according to him fast enough. So anyway, that's, that's Sam Poulet. Uh, we were both uh, painted, the chicken and I, no, the kai, or what do they call it, kai, the, the quail and I were painted from life. Mm. And of course I love the red rubber gloves. In France at the time, you had these brilliant colored gloves to choose from. And in, in our country at the time, it was, it was yellow or nothing. Mm. Okay, this one's self-portrait with plastic horse. Um, this is um, actually an American girl plastic horse I bought at a yard sale. Um, it's a lipizzan. And at the time I'd had no experience with lipizzans except as a child seeing a lipizzan show, I think. Um, but one of the things I enjoy doing is um, trying on different personas. And, and here I'm, I guess I'm, I think I must, uh, must be a Hollywood starlet with my, with my lip is on. Um, so, <laughs> um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because you'll see again, talk about circling the drain, you'll see this reappear again in um, a later image. At that point, I had never seen uh, a lip is on up close. Okay, we move on to the next one. Oh, and by the way, that was a pastel. I had started um, going into pastel. I knew that I was going to be um, working on a, uh, an exhibition for the speed in pastel. So at this point, I'm, I'm really working hard. I'm drop, putting the oils aside and uh, working exclusively in pastel so that I have some of my uh, ability to work in that fluently. Uh, I started pastels when I was in high school. I just taught it to myself. It's a very easy medium. You can always undo your mistakes, which of course I love. Um, so this is, uh, this is me at the time. Again, I'm very interested in costume, very interested in period. Uh, I'm a Georgian England girl that in terms of my area of study, 
Um, I love the artists of that time. I, I love um, I love Rayburn and I love uh, all, all those guys who are working in England at the same time. So first thing I do is head out into the, one of museum and I go look at um, Gainsborough and all those people. So there's always horses, usually a dog. Um, and in this one, this is my horse, Willie. And uh, I must say, give great thanks to beautiful friends I have wonderful friends who were able to give me access to their horses and create a, a wonderful therapeutic um, moment for me once a week to ride. And sometimes more than that, I was able to ride. And for me, that's total therapy. It's fantastic. And I'm deeply grateful to my friends who were put their horses um, in my hands to ride. This is Willie. And um, because of my deep connection to history and, um, and costume, I am painting myself here. I, ro I rode side saddle for seven years and uh, I'm here in a costume. Uh, I have a, a room full, devoted to costumes in, in this house. And, um, and uh, here in the background we see, uh, this is from a uh, World War II news photo of, um, this would have been a Japanese uh, soldier executing an American. And when I put that in, I didn't have a clue as to why it was there, but it seemed necessary. Um, and a friend of mine uh, came to the studio and he started laughing. He said, what is that going on in the background? And I honestly could not tell him. I didn't have any idea. Um, and it usually takes a couple of years to get that. And um, and after a couple of years, I realized it was reflecting a moment when I felt betrayed by someone close to me. And that was my way of exercising it from my psyche and healing. So again, I, I have an art therapy background. I've never, I never practiced, but my work, I can't, I can't deny the fact that it's all art therapy. Okay, we can move along. Um, okay, this was, um, this was the piece that was in the Smithsonian uh, National Portrait Gallery. And um, in either corner are portraits of my two late husbands. This was after I had uh, lost both. Uh, and they were, they're full, fully realized portraits that I covered up with clouds and sky. And um, this was, uh, again, working through loss and, um, and healing. Okay, I think we can move on to the next, again, all pastel. Okay, uh, then I was um, again having to face uh, very difficult issues. My father had um, become quite ill with Alzheimer's. My mother was having difficulties dealing with him. Um, and I was, uh, it, it became my sole responsibility to care for both of them. They were about a seven and a half, eight hour drive. Um, so a lot of my weekends uh, for several years, um, once a month or so, I would be there to uh, kind of manage things and make sure that, uh, that they were both cared for and taken care of. Um, so this is, um, uh, this is, uh, mom is, um, as you can see, mom and I have um, very similar characteristics. Her, her features are more classic. She was very beautiful. Um, I have, I have my, my father's nose. <laughs> uh, but, she, but she loved to model and she loved doing whatever she could for my career. So uh, in this instance, again, we have Lacey and she's, again, a, a naked dog. And the pun is that here we are in our fur coats and, um, and she's without one. Mm -hmm. um, and in this one, you can start to see that I'm not, uh, it became difficult to, uh, to deal with, um, it, it, it took a chunk of my life, frankly, uh, and took a lot of my studio time to be, be the caregiver. So at this point I had discovered the fact, the idea that maybe mom and I could have this um, joint venture of her modeling for me. And that of course went, meant the world to her if she could help me. 
And instead of me just helping her, she was able to give back also. So it was a real win-win. And uh, at this point, I, I switched from working from life to photography. Uh, at this point, it was absolutely essential that I do so because um, when I would go home to take care of them, uh, there was no time really for anything else other than um, some time out for some modeling. Okay, next one. So this is my mother. Um, I would bring all kinds of props uh, when I would come to North Carolina to care for her. And she loved to model. She actually had been an artist model um, in her youth. She was very beautiful. Um, and so, I mean, just for one, one portrait session, uh, she was, someone said, oh, let's, let's get her. Um, so she's here wearing her wedding dress, her wedding, original wedding dress. She, her bedroom was white carpeting, uh, a white sofa. And um, I said, let's stretch out here. And she, of course, being relaxed, would fall asleep instantly, which is even better. So I didn't have to worry about causing her discomfort or, because I had to fuss. I'm not a great photographer. I'm thinking, how do you get, you know? So um, she, would, she would lay there. And then my dog, at the time, a new dog, a completely hairless dog, um, found great joy in sitting in anyone's lap. So usually these images include uh, Fanny, the new one that I just showed you with uh, the uh, thing around her head. <laughs> okay, so this is great. This is really large painting. It's uh, 72 by 45 inches and it's pastel on, on paper. Okay, and, and I actually had one solo show, nothing but uh, paintings of my mother. Um, and this is one that's now in the, um, in the Indianapolis Museum of Art. And this is one I took with a really bad cell phone. Uh, I couldn't control the light, but uh, it, it was, uh, I, I found this, her in the situation to be so beautiful. Um, you can see even at this age, you know, she's, um, she's close to 90 and she's, she's still so beautiful. Uh, and I love the blue of the, um, these mattresses that kind of puff up to, for older, older people. And she's not, she's not at death's door at this point. She's uh, just in for um, some kind of a, an infection that needed to be cleared up. And then of course there's, there's uh, Fanny at the, at the foot of the bed. So that's the, uh, I think we move on to the next one. Um, okay, so during this time, uh, I began my work with the Speed Art Museum for the Pastel Exhibition. Um, we were looking at um, Francis Coates. I was allowed to select any, any painting in their, in their archives of, that I would like to do a basis of paintings based on that particular artist, that particular painting that I selected. I found Francis Coates, who was a pastelist, again, working in that Georgian period of that 1726 to 1770. Uh, I had seen his work in person, which is a rare thing in Rome. Uh, I, was, I was given a grant to uh, work on, uh, to observe the work of uh, Caravaggio. And uh, I happened to find this pastel done by him. So when they showed me the pastels of two sisters, this is exactly the background that was in the, um, in the painting by, by um, Francis Coates. So in, and in his painting, you always, uh, in his, there's two sisters, and then there's a, a dog up front, in front of them jumping. And right now you see uh, Lace, excuse me, Fanny in the background behind Leisha Priest, who is uh, an artist in her own right. Uh, and in the orange is Nima Tambo, who became one of my, my great muses, um, who uh, worked with me on several paintings. And uh, Leisha is holding uh, a dear friend's uh, little dog who, what shall I say, created kind of a stink. When, we, when she picked up the dog, the dog was um, anxious and became quite odiferous. So the girls were having a hard time keeping from laughing. So anyway, <laughs> They were, <laughs> there was, anyway, we got the shot. And uh, so we went from there. Okay, we can go next. Uh, again, the, all of the images in the exhibition that were these doubles were of 
uh, using that same background. This time, uh, you can see the background actually as a painting in its own in its own right. Again, with a blue tape. You'll see the blue tape later. It's uh, it's tacked to the wall, and the one you see that these are both me. It's called Separated at Birth, and um, I am wearing the the British flag at this moment. I'm contemplating. Um, gearing up for the National Portrait Gallery uh, in Great Britain. They have a competition every year. So I had I found this t-shirt at Goodwill and was wearing this around for good luck. But this is typically how I look um, in the studio, no makeup, my greasy hair, and I do mean greasy. <laughs> for like a week out, maybe. And, um, and so it's, I'm kind of a bag lady. But if you see the image you see in the navy dress, that's me going out for the evening. I love to do costume. And so I love to put on, pile on the makeup, put on, um, well, some pretty interesting costume type things. And uh, this, this gown, of course, is, is period uh, French. Um, and, but I, obviously I don't wear, well, sometimes I do. Just depends. But so this is the two sides of me. So, okay, we can move on to the next slide. Okay, here I am. Um, I actually showed up at a dinner party with that wig, um, just in regular street attire. <laughs> I mean, I just do, I've got, I've got tons of wigs, tons of jewelry, boxes of scarves. I mean, a lot of clothes. Uh, a lot of clothes for a tomboy kind of person that I am. So again, this is Lacey. This is a memorial portrait to my beloved, beloved angel. Uh, at this time, she's, um, she has, she's senile and blind um, and not too long. She, she died at 16. Um, but I am wearing, again, this is, um, this is a period uh, costume from Actors Theater. They are very kind about loaning um, costumes that are fairly accurate. And of course, the Marie Antoinette type of wig. Um, okay, I think we can move on to the next one. Um, this one, this is um, the portrait that actually got gained entry into the uh, BP NPG uh, Award 18, which is the most prestigious portrait competition uh, in the world. And um, I had tried before and failed because I had to make that transition from pastel to oil and it took a couple of years. So this is, uh, Nima became um, someone who I uh, worked with for a, a long time. She and I had made a goal that we were going to submit this painting of her to the NPG, um, the National Portrait Gallery in London uh, for that competition. And um, Nima is, was a really, really brilliant young woman and uh, artistic and kind and just a wonderful, wonderful sitter. I think the thing that, um, that was so, beautiful about her is besides her being this wonderful person she was the kind of um, person who understood that when I'm running around um, ready to throw my brushes in the air she would be very calm and she had this beautiful energy so I would be bringing, asking her to come back and come back over and over and over again. I can't get your head. It has to be Nima. It has to be Nima. It has to be you. And um, and so she came back over and over and over again. Sat very patient, for, patiently with me. When we'd have when we'd have lunch, um, and then uh, it, the same thing with her collarbones. And then again, the arms moved up and down. The hands moved up and down. And this is with the aid of photography. Uh, but Nima was willing and a full partner in this. Uh, this is totally collaboration. I want to emphasize that our models, the people who sit for us, um, we become deeply involved with them on a very intimate basis. And, and in terms of the understanding of one another on a psychic level. And um, it is always a collaboration. And I, I, I owe all of the people who have ever sat for me um, 
a, a great a great debt for their patients because just because I'm I'm really slow and um and they are uh, they ha they watch me uh, you know obliterate what I they have set for for hours days and then start all over again and 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 Nima, in Nima's case she was um, so forgiving and so dear. So I think that's the end of our, yeah, that's the end of our, our slides. A quick and question before we move to the um, studio visit, um, which I'm really anticipating is gonna be fun for everybody. Um, how, I know you use a mirror when you paint yourself, but how, how does that work? I mean, a mirror has a reverse image and I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you do that? Uh, I have a, a little problem with reversals. It, it's like a little, it's like almost like a learning disability. So I don't even understand it. So when someone asked me, like I never, i never could understand writing lessons. Um, so left or right doesn't mean anything to me. So I would just paint what I see and, and it's only actually when I started working from photographs, I'd say, you know, I didn't realize I looked like that because I've been seeing myself from the reverse all this time. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you, um, let's see, it's about, uh, yeah, let's, let's move on and, and look at some things that you actually have in your studio, Gayla. Okay. Um, and by the way, the school I was referring, referring to before is the New York Students Art League, and they would have a summer program every year where the faculty would go for three months and they would live in, on this beautiful island and then teach um, people who would, students who would come at, and, and do work within their program. And it was very wonderful people, Ruth Miller, um, James Lachey, Robert Beecham, et cetera. Ah, uh, okay. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to stand up here and Okay, we're going to need to undecapitate me. There we go. Okay, perfect. Yep. Okay, good deal. Okay, this is called self portrait with ten, the 10 apostles, 12 apostles, pardon me, I can't count um, the 12 <laughs> apostles. And it started, I, I had um, been, been given a grant from the Great Meadows Foundation here in Louisville um, to go to Venice, the Venice Biennale. And I, was, I saw there a series of little landscapes that were very, very close uh, in, and they were small and very close in value. And they stretched across this long wall. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be fun to do with, with images? I am a feminist and I always have been. And one of the things I thought would be really a great idea was to reverse the male gaze by doing a whole row of images of men. Um, so I started with, um, most of these are, are guys who live very close by, if not my neighborhood. Um, so I would um, ask this, this, this man here is my mechanic um, and we've, uh, he's worked on my car for years. Um, this is a, a wonderful French artist who lives in my neighborhood. Um, most of these guys are in the arts, I would say that. Oh, um, that's, um, that's um, Ayakovatsi Pao. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. David, yes. He's fabulous. Yes. He's a fabulous <laughs> artist. Yep. Yep, David. David. Yes. Uh, and. So anyway, I, I did all, it took about two years to do all of these. I would do a sitting from life first in oil, and then I would do photography. And if I were ha was having a really rough time, what I would do then is have them come back and rework them. But most of that was from photography. Everybody's really busy right now. And the last thing they want to do is sit in a chair with a dog in their lap, it's a lap dog. Um, and you know, tie up their schedules. Most of these people are like, you know, of course they're busy. So um, then I had a colleague come over uh, who actually was the curator of the speed at one time and had given me a show there on the Saints. And wonderful eye, very, just a terrific um, a critic and uh, 
wonderful supporter as well. And I, I, told, I showed him what I was working on, the string of, you know, of about, at that time, eight paintings of, of these, these men. And he said, well, you're not, you're not, you're not reversing the male gaze. Sorry. Um, and he gave me a lot to think about. And why, what I thought about was, well, what if I did a big self-portrait and stuck myself in the middle? And this, uh, this is, uh, uh, this man here uh, is a professor at, at U of L and his, uh, his name is Shay. And he had said, you know, if, if you're gonna do 12, like you're saying, that makes, why not? Well, maybe that's the 12 apostles. Um, and I thought about that and then I, um, so when it came to do my self portrait, um, I gave myself the Salvador Mundi kind of pose. And again, most of this is pretty unconscious. And um, Michael Brom, who is the photographer here, this is him. He, he uh, and I traded and he did this photograph of me and you'll notice I, I thought when I was doing this that I was kind of finger doing my fingers crossed as you know, like a joke, you know, I'm just kidding. Actually, that is a blessing. I got a book on hand symbology. That is actually a blessing. Interestingly, it um, created this sculpture of, uh, not sculpture, excuse me, it created a shadow that looks like a dog. And my Chinese crescent has, big bulgy eyes and it, and it, and we got to laughing the uh, Michael Broma, the photographer about how funny that was. But I thought, you know, I'm gonna use that. So here I am, this is with an ostrich egg um, and um, I'm wearing um, a child's headband with roses and uh, ears. And uh, there's a kind of a sense of hybridity with that. Uh, I don't know if you can see that from here, but yeah, you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, so, and again, my friend Gabrielle had a bunch of them in her house. I saw them, I said, oh, I wanna wear one. <laughs> so, um, and I had this space, a lot of space here. So that really helped um, complete that space. So anyway, that's, so when I put them all together, it made a lot more sense. And I'm, and I'm grateful to uh, all the feedback I got on how to make these, this series of men, male uh, colleagues and friends. Um, <laughs> not sure they thrill me called apostles. Anyway, <laughs> they, they've all got a sense of humor. <laughs> so, that's, uh, and these are 11 by 14, and I think this is 40 by 40, 30, it's something like that. Hmm. So you can get a, a sense of scale. I'm, yeah. I'm five foot 10, something like yeah. that. So it's, it's pretty big. Great. <coughs> okay. We're on to the next. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna, okay. Ah. All right. This is- good. Uh, That's good. That's great. This yep. is, this is a painting. It's, it's a pretty good size. Um, it's oil on panel. And this is a painting of my dear friends that I've known for 20 years plus. This is Eileen and Katie, they're sisters. And I adore them. They are just <laughs> fabulous people I've known forever. Um, and this is, this is Katie's deceased dog who, who's a great love, um, a beautiful dog. Um, and of course, this is Fanny. Uh, they were sitting on their laps. Uh, I'm excuse me. They were sitting on the floor. And uh, any open lap is is open season for uh, a <laughs> lap dog like a Chinese crested. So she's in there. She also becomes a directional on um, oh. mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. And at the time, this was um, right in the middle of the COVID thing, and I caught them just before uh, everything shut down. But I was not able to find a panel that fit. Um, you couldn't, the art supply store wasn't open. I got the photography and just under the wire before they closed down. Um, and what I did instead was I taped off, and this is painted now. I taped off this area um, and, and used it as kind of a dividing line, uh, a kind of 
energy that is beyond that is beyond what we have in life. We don't know what's out there. And that's a, that kind of mystery is what I'm interested in representing. Also, it must, you have to be aware of the fact that in every studio, in fact, our, our, our floor, my floor is covered with blue tape um, for, this, for this program. Um, so this, this tape uh, becomes an important element. Uh, and just to give you an idea, uh, this is, Eileen's gonna hate me. Eileen, don't hate me. But this is, uh, these were done outside. Um, they're oil, uh, quick oil paintings, a couple hours done from life uh, before I actually started this. But I've done it for so many years that that was a huge help. So, so Gayla, now you're working a lot with uh, photographs and reality, kind of combining the two uh, in your work. Is that correct? Yes, because and it started with my mother because um, I could not work from her from life because she was not able to hold up. Um, she, you know, she was not physically able to hold a pose. Um, I and I was working long distance again. I needed. That's how I started with photography, and um, I, by that time I was really tired of myself. Really, oh, as, as for self portrait, <laughs> so tired. So, um, okay, we're going to move on to a pastel. We wanted to include a pastel, and this is, um, and these were done from life. This is my mother. Uh, you can see her here, and she came to my studio, obviously, and sat for me. And this is my sister, very beautiful in a, in a silk um, Edwardian gown. It was actually an original from Actors Theater. And this is um, my uh, first Chinese crested lacy. And um, <laughs> when mom sat, they sat separately. When mom sat, my sister's job was to come over and keep my mother awake. My mom would get that. It's a really sunny studio, and she'd sit there and she'd pretty, pretty soon she'd nod off, and I'd say, "Shelly, go over and adjust her head." So <laughs> Shelly would do that, and uh, and Shelly, of course, was uh, is a very active kind of person. And when she was sitting, I'd have to chastise her because she's, "Are you done yet? Are you done?" <laughs> I say, "No, I am not done." So anyway. It, they, they were quite a challenge, but uh, I was actually over here. This, this was, it had another maybe foot to it. And I had done my self portrait uh, with them, but you know, it, it was not a good thing. So uh, let's see, we are moving on to, yes. Uh, so we have a little bit of glare, I think. Here, I'll stand kind of close to it. This is, this is my beloved Nima. Um, this, I just started, this is a in progress and I had started working with her back with uh, the painting you just saw that was in the National Portrait Gallery um, in, in Great Britain, uh, which actually did win a second uh, choice, sec People's Choice Awards second place. So this is, um, I started this painting, it's the fifth one, and um, she had told me she was ill, and we had kept in touch with texts and emails, but um, one day her sister called and told me that she had died. And uh, she was just saw, was two weeks shy of her 27th birthday. I was devastated. Mm. Um, it was cancer, and um, we thought she had a pretty good chance of beating it since she was so young. But as, as is my norm, uh, my way of dealing with um, grief um, is to paint the person, the beloved person that I've lost. And um, I had, since I already started these uh, prior to her death, I had taken these pictures about a year and a half ago um, and I had chosen not to follow through because I thought it was the wrong horse for her this is, by the way, getting back to the horses that you saw me earlier with. This is a Lipizzan, and we had gone to the Lipizzan barn with this costume from um, Actors Theater. And the hat here is, is right here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can see it. It's a tricorn yes. of that period. 
it's, yep. it's uh, on some hair here. Um, and uh, it was, it was, anyway, here's the lip is on back, a real live one. And um, thanks to my dear friends, um, I have been able to uh, not only visit a Libazon one, but actually ride one a couple of times and have been able to ride for the past 20 years um, on a regular basis, which is not possible on an artist's salary mm. ever. So I'm forever indebted to um, the, these wonderful people. Um, so anyway, she's, she's here with the Lipazon and uh, his name is Tux. So, um, and you're still working on this piece, right? This is halfway through, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe more. Um, so yeah, it's got a long ways to go, but just painting her really, really helped um, deal with some of the grief issues mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a loss for me. She was um, a, not only uh, my, while well, she was amused, uh, what yeah. else? Can do? Yeah. Okay, I think we can move on to the very last one in the studio. And this is the one that is giving nightmares, apparently. No, not nightmares. <laughs> pleasant dreams. <laughs> pleasant dreams. Oh, pleasant dreams. Good for you. Pleasant dreams. Okay. All right. We, we're getting everything except... Uh... Perfect. Oh, it is perfect. Okay, great. So um, this is uh, this is of my COVID self-portrait. I think it's about just... There we go. Uh, this is my COVID self-portrait. And um, here I am, no makeup, greasy hair. And uh, due to stress issues, I started developing these, um, I don't know, they're kind of, it's, it's some icky things around my eyelids that had to be treated by an ophthalmologist. Uh, so I'm in pretty sad shape here. Um, so I, uh, I started, uh, of course, it's, I'm having to do me again. And um, we have here blue tape again, blue tape. And it's about the constriction that I was feeling. Um, I'm relegated to, a, I live in a big old Victorian that always needs work um, and just my dog. And my, my relationships with all my friends was curtailed due to the fact, and it still is, but not so much, uh, curtailed to um, being in the house um, and not being able to continue going to the gym. And at the time the horses um, were injured and I wasn't even able to ride. So I was uh, not happy. So um, this is, uh, and what's interesting is I never have done stripes before, but when, this is horse country where I live. And what I noticed, um, so interesting, when I, when I was driving to the barn, uh, there's all these uh, fences, black fences that cast these amazing, stripy, wavy uh, shadows for miles. And I got to thinking, you know, I bet that's why I picked this darn shirt. Um, because I, I've been doing this drive for, you know, maybe 16, 17 years out to this fabulous farm where these horses are. And uh, it's, it's interesting how those things show up in your work. So yeah, there I am, happy girl. Okay, I think, I, I think I've um, done um, all that I need to do in the studio in terms of work that's available to you. Um, what can I, what questions might you have? <laughs>